Welcome back to the program and now to some of your stories in brief. We begin with the federal government on amnesty as they say 16,000 ex-agitators out of 30,000 registered members trained on the, the amnesty program. But they've empowered them and this is uh, also with a view to making them self-reliant to attract further development to the region. The coordinator of the program, uh, Professor Charles Dukabor, is asking the beneficiaries to focus on their objectives uh, stakeholders in the amnesty program are asking the government to make available more funds for the program to enable more people benefit. Elsewhere, Governor of Niger State, Mr. Abubakar Bele, has asked State Assembly to work with the judiciary to amend some of the existing criminal laws to enable effective administration of criminal justice in the state. The governor believes the amendment of the laws would also help in tackling the current security challenge in the state. Now, former National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, Mr. John Riego, says the National Assembly's order for a fresh proclamation letter for the Edo State Assembly undermines the powers of the State Governor, Mr. Golden Obateki. Mr. Riego insists that all those interfering in the Assembly crisis should allow the rule of law to take its course, saying that the impasse is a reflection of immature politics. He was speaking in Minas City, the Edo State capital. And thank God this nation has a constitution. And that constitution binds everybody. Uh, I don't think it has ever happened to this, in this country that uh, National Assembly or anybody will issue instructions to a sovereign government. I, I don't know, I'm amazed, but all these things will unravel in the next few weeks in the next uh, few months. We must be a law-abiding nation, and we must allow the constitution of this nation to prevail, irrespective of how powerful any individuals are in the corridors of power, irrespective. The governor is like a state president, and so Anybody really who outside the rules fights the state governor is in fact uh, almost uh, undermining the sovereignty of all of us that we have entrusted uh, to the governor. It is, it is, it is very wrong. If that is what is happening, it is very wrong. In the meantime, the Federal High Court sitting in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, has restrained the governor of Edo State, Mr. Gordon Obataki, from issuing a fresh proclamation letter as directed by the Senate. The court also stopped the clerk of the National Assembly, the President of Senate, as well as the Speaker of the House of Representatives, or their agents, officers, or privies from interfering or taking over the legislative functions of the Edo State House of Assembly. Furthermore, the court granted an order restraining the Inspector General of Police the State Security Service, their servants, agents, officers, or privies from sealing up the Edo State House of Assembly or obstructing activities at the Assembly, according to the court. The orders followed requests sought by the Deputy Speaker of the Edo uh, State House of Assembly, Honorable Yakini Idaye, and the member representing Ikoba Okha constituency in the Assembly, Honorable Henry Okwarobo, who are the plaintiffs in the case. In the obtained order paper, the court said, the plaintiffs or applicants are granted an order of interim injunction restraining the first to third defendant or respondents in this case, the clerk of the National Assembly, the president of Senate and the speaker of the House of Representatives, their servant agents, officers or privies from interfering or taking over the legislative functions of the Edo State House of Assembly pending the determination of these substantive suits. And the Forum of Young Nigerian Professionals is calling for a thorough probe of the nation's electricity sector, saying that the huge amount of money spent on the sector from 1999 till date does not justify the output from the sector. The group is also asking the National Assembly to make the investigation public, irrespective of who is involved in the alleged diversion of funds meant for the generation distribution of electricity to Nigerians. Speaking at a news conference, the chairman of the forum and says that the lack of accountability in the nation's electricity sector is one of the reasons why Nigeria can achieve the 40,000 megawatts target for the year 2020. It will be recalled that Honorable Sada Soli, member representing 
GBR Keita Federal Constituency of Castina State move a motion entitled Need to Review Government Expenditure on the Power Sector to Ensure Sustainers of the Power Reform Program in Nigeria. The motion was unanimously adopted by the House of Representatives, which resolved to set up another committee to carry out a comprehensive investigation hearing on how much money was spent on the power sector reform program over the years without commensurate results and report back within six weeks for further legislative action. In the light of the above, we demand for an unbiased and transparent investigation into the power sector spending over the years. This will be a very comprehensive investigation covering the 16 billion spent by the Obasanjo-led administration between 1999 and 2007. The power spending of administration of President Humar Musiya Adualit, Good Luck Jonathan, and the incumbent Muhammadu Buhari, we are confident no one will hide under the excuse of being witch hunted. With just a year to go before the 2020 target of the 40,000 megawatts for the country, based on the alleged investigate investment in the proposed power plants, all those who have questions to answer must be brought forward to explain why the power generation target has remained unattainable despite the huge investment. Let's take you to Bochi, where the People's Democratic Movement, PDM, has withdrawn its petition filed against INEC at the State Tribunal, which seeks nullification of the governorship election in the state due to non-inclusion of its party's logo on the ballot paper in the last general election. The withdrawal follows uh, permission granted by Chairman of the Tribunal, Justice Salu Shribal, during Saturday's sitting. A counsel to the PDM, Barrister Li Ulemu, says the decision was arrived at by party stakeholders after due considerations of the achievements made so far by the Bochi State Governor within the short period in office. Now, due to the intervention of the stakeholders in Bochi State, our, the members of our party in Bochi State, they have taken a review of the position and situation in Bochi State. It is the view of the PDM in Bauchi State that all they are after when they contested this election is the progress of Bauchi State and its people. In that vein, the people of the members of the PDM in Bauchi have decided in the interest of the state and to allow Senator Bala Mohammed to concentrate on the act of governance and to support the vision and mission which the PDM stands for which is the advancement of the poor people and general population of the people in Bauchi State and Nigeria at large to support his government. Well, that's it on the program, Lunchtime Politics. Let us know what you're up to and join the conversation on our social media platforms at Channels TV at CTV Politics, hashtag Lunchtime Politics. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. I'll see you soon.